Hi everyone and a warm welcome to the ING Golf Club. Well, a real mixed bag this week on the show, but our main focus is the Lion Foundation Interprovincial staged at the Napier Golf Club over this past week. Well, on paper, the Bay of Plenty were the team to beat. They were looking for a three-peat, but their arch rivals Waikato were determined to take them out this year. But as with any tournament, upsets were on the cards and emerging new talent was on display. It's perhaps the most keenly fought tournament on New Zealand's golf calendar. Fifteen provinces, five golfers per team fighting for one elusive trophy. And true to the nature of the Interprovincial Championship, there were plenty of upsets during round robin at Napier Golf Club. And it was the home team, Hawke's Bay, backed by massive galleries all week, that finished top qualifier. Led by Doug Holloway, who was named player of the tournament, they upset back-to-back -back champs Bay of Plenty earlier in the week. Also through to the semis were last year's beaten finalist, Waikato, after winning six of their round-robin encounters. They would take on Wellington, who also toppled Bay of Plenty earlier in the week and won five matches to qualify in third spot. But there were still five other teams vying for the final semi-final place heading into the last day, including Auckland, who fell to Waikato on the second to last round. New Zealand rep Kevin Chun was unbeaten up until then, and New Auckland needed to beat lowly Aorangi in the final round. What's going to be the uh, team strategy when you go into this afternoon's match? Play well, win 5-0. That's the uh, strategy. It was far from a 5-0 win for Chun's Auckland side, the giant killing Aorangi team, bundling them out in the Interprovincials 3.5 to 1.5. North Harbour had the best chance to progress through to the semi-finals, but up against hometown heroes Hawke's Bay, Josh Carmichael's side couldn't find the hole and were blitzed 4.5 to a half. So it was now down to three teams, Northland, Canterbury, and Bay of Plenty to snatch the final playoff berth. And Northland were first to drop out of the race, their brave effort falling at the last hurdle, beaten three and two by Otago. We basically thought to ourselves, we really needed to win five, five nil against Otago this afternoon um, to give ourselves any chance. Um, obviously the way I played, um, that idea went straight out the window, but um, you know, a couple of clutch games didn't go away at the end there, so we, we ended up losing, but um, you know, we put up a good fight and it was a pleasing week. Next up it was Canterbury searching for a semi-final spot against Hawke's Bay. They took on Waikato in the final round Robin encounter and were up in three of their five games with just three holes remaining. But Waikato edged back and the encounter was locked at two games apiece. It would come down to the number ones where Waikato's Brad Shilton eagled the 17th hole to seemingly dash Canterbury's hopes. Leaving Brad Stewart with an eagle attempt to stay in the match and keep Canterbury's playoff hopes alive. It was sort of do or die. It was one of those putts that, I mean, it kept us in it, I guess, but um, it was, yeah, it just went in, which is, um, which is good. But the Miracle Eagle wasn't enough. Shilton with a birdie part on the last to send Canterbury packing. Yeah, it's disappointing. Waikato played really well today and we gave it a best shot, you know. And, I mean, the guys fought well and um, unfortunately it just um, came out on the other side. So now the bedraggled Bay of Plenty side only needed to beat Manawatu Wanganui to claim the final semi-final place against Hawke's Bay. We're definitely relieved that we've sort of struggled this week. I sort of had a feeling that it was going to be a tough week for us, and it has been, but we're definitely stuck to be through the semis. And the defending champs would be looking to exact revenge on semi-final opponents, Hawks Bay. They've got a good crowd support, and we want to try and keep them quiet all day tomorrow. Hopefully that's the plan, and go hard or go home. And the Blue and Golds went out hard early. They were up 3.5 to 1.5 at the halfway stage. Fifth at the recent Eisenhower, Josh Geary let his famed pink putter do the talking. Four up over Darren Turley after nine holes. It was number four Terry Hong who got points on the board early with a six and five victory. And it was soon two wins to the defending champs as Geary dispatched Turley five and four. Hawks Bay were now one loss away from missing out on the final. And Nick Radinich went two down to Jay Ahn as they headed to the 17th green. 
And when this par putt attempt by Radonich lived out, Arne had the three in one victory, and Bay of Plenty had the vital third point to send them into the final. While it was a disappointing exit for Hawke's Bay, third place was a top finish for a team many onlookers had discounted before the tournament began. A lot of people thought that. We just felt we uh, did what we uh, believed of ourselves. Oh, naturally we're disappointed. I mean, we've had a good week, but uh, we, we believe we could win this week. So, uh, yes, we're disappointed. So, Waikato versus Wellington for the right to play the Bay in the final. We'll have the exciting finish later in the show. It's a trophy the Bay of Plenty have had their name on for the last two years. Who would meet them in the interprovincial final would come down to a tense semi final between Waikato and Wellington. Waikato number three, Matthew Holton, had this to stay in the match with Brendan Stewart. Wellington with the first points as Stewart won four and three, thanks to a hole in one earlier in the round. My opponent, Matt Holton, hit his tee shot first into the left hand bunker. So I thought, well, just centre the green would be nice. Over the ball with eight iron, I didn't feel comfortable, I backed off. Then went realigned over the ball and I hit it, staring down, I was like, oh yeah, this is looking good. And it bounced 10 feet behind the hole and everyone clapped and next minute everyone roared. And I was like, oh, here we go, hole in one. So, that was amazing. I mean, I've had two before, but the old lady hasn't seen one. So, she's seen this one and I think I'll dedicate that one to her. So Wellington had one point on the board and in with a sniff of an upset. But number five, Richard Pegg, sent his approach to the 17th towards the card path. He couldn't recover and Guy Penrose won two and one and locked the encounter up at one win apiece. And with Wellington's Andrew Green beating Richard Wright on the last, the Capital had two wins on the board with one win away from the final. Waikato number two Mark Purser was two up over Demetrius Amos with two holes to play and this delicately weighted putt on 17 was enough to halve the hole. Winners match two and one and level the encounter two wins apiece. So it would come down to the number ones. Wellington's Sean Richards taking on former New Zealand rep Brad Shilton who led one up teeing off on the 16th. Richards lost the 16th and found himself heading out of the rough on 17. A shot later and Richards had this putt to stay in the match. Shilton winning 3-1 and, and Waikato scraping through to a repeat of last year's final at the expense of a spirited Wellington side. After our first round loss to Hawke's Bay, we thought, well, we'd better get our butts into gear. We came back with uh, you know, all the wins to get to the semis. So um, full credit to the boys. I mean, we, we're happy, but um, unfortunately we're not into the final. The tension mounted as the Bay of Plenty, looking for their third win in a row, took on arch rivals Waikato, who had the better of the Bay in 2004. The close calls continued as Waikato's number five Guy Penrose putted on 17 to remain in his match with Jason McIntosh, the Bay putting the first points on the board. But the encounter was squared up here as Mark Purser beat Josh Geary 2-1. And, and with Terry Hong four down to Richard Wright with four holes to play, it looked as though Bay's winning run may come to an end. But Hong never gave up. He needed this chip on 17 to send the match to the 18th hole. And on the final hole, he completed the comeback to square his match. I was trying just never give up, just keep trying, just find the fairway, find the green, just it's the easy pass. That's the reason. Things were locked up at one and a half wins apiece, but Waikato number three, Matthew Holton, couldn't hold off Jay Arm. And the Bay moved through to two and a half points, just a half point away from an interprovincial three-peat. And that vital half point came on the 18th as Captain Mark Smith sealed the stunning victory. Yeah, I can't believe it, to tell the truth. Um, it was looking pretty grim yesterday. It looked like we sort of had no chance to get through, and then uh, Aaron did us a favour in the morning, beating Auckland. And it's two years in a row. Yeah, six years in a row in the semis, and uh, two finals in a row, so pretty gutted. And um, any other players you want to mention amongst, amongst the five? Oh, I have to mention all of them, it's been great. Uh, Terry Hong, four down with four to go and managed to have a half and that basically got it for us. So the Bay of Plenty doing what so many great sporting teams have done in the past and winning despite not playing to the best of their abilities.